Hey guys, Paradise here. So I'm here today to raise your attention or tell you a little bit about Nino Kuni 2. Now, this is a new game that's coming out. It is a JRPG game, the second in the Nino Kuni series, and I'm coming in from the perspective of someone that didn't play the first one. So I'm completely new to the series, but really liked the art style and the visual appearance of it, and as a big RPG lover, was quite excited to play Nino Kuni 2. So this video should give you my impressions and my outlook on Nino Kuni 2 from what I've played so far. So to begin with, I've played about 10 hours of Nino Kuni 2. I've really tried to get a good grasp of the game. And let me tell you that the first thing you're going to know about this game when you play it is that there is a lot of depth in the game. It is definitely going to be a longer game. I'm about 10 hours in and I'm discovering new things, new mechanics in the game, left, right and centre. This game doesn't stop giving, at least so far. I really want to try and keep this impression as spoiler free as possible. Of course, in the video, there's going to be unavoidable. There's going to be a few minor story spoilers, but everything you're going to see is only in the first few hours of the story or is already in trailers. So don't worry, I'm not going to ruin any story for you. The game seems to take quite a different approach to a traditional RPG. The combat in it is action focused, yet it seems to pull different elements of things from Final Fantasy, as well as other core JRPGs and traditional RPGs, such as the way you interact with mobs on the map. It includes two different types of map mechanics. You have a map that you can roam and run into creatures which activates a combat area where you then fight and then go back to the main map. It also includes a type of map where you go into an instance, you have the whole map that you can explore and there are mobs scattered throughout that area. And as you'll discover later on into the game, it also has this type of army system where you run around with your little troops and you clear an area of map with your army. The game has a traditional leveling system, kill things, get XP, level up, unlock more skills. It of course has your usual equipment selection that goes in any RPG. You can have up to three party members in combat at any one time, although you do get more than three party members total as you progress through the game. The combat is very smooth, it feels really good. It is an action combat as I've said before. You have access to skills, different weapons, from melee to ranged to magic. And that brings us into our next point to talk about, which is the unique system to Nino Kuni 2, the Higglies. Gosh! What in the... Oh, you two! You can see my little lovelies, can't you? Why not have them lend you a hand? So Higglies are these little spirit-like creatures, as if they've been plucked right out of Studio Ghibli. You have these creatures that you sort of collect as you go through the story. I don't know if they're randomised or if they're story-based as of this moment, but it seems that the skills linked to them are definitely randomised, so there's a sort of collection element to them. They join you in combat, you can have up to four of them at one time. They're a little cluster of these spirit creatures with one hero or leader in that cluster. They all have unique abilities, they're combat-focused creatures, and it really mixes up the combat and makes it a lot more fun and adds that depth as well as progression to finding and upgrading these little Higglies. So we have to take a moment to pause and talk about the art style. It is absolutely gorgeous. While maybe not for everyone, this very lovely fantasy style of Studio Ghibli-esque setting is really, really gorgeous and really helps with the immersion. While Nino Kuni 2 doesn't have the Studio Ghibli name behind it, it does definitely have the heritage and influence from the studio. The art, the animation are completely gorgeous. All of the combat animations as well fit really well into the setting and style of game. What I will say is if you are a fan of this art style, this alone is perhaps a good enough reason for you to get into this game. But let's just talk about the story for a minute. I'm going to give you a brief breakdown of the story as spoiler free as possible. You're a person that's thrust into this fantasy world. There's all sorts of problems going on. A big event has just happened and you're set off on your adventure to set things right. Right. And that is about the basics that I can give you for the story without spoiling anything. To go into a bit more depth into the RPG elements of this game, it has different elemental types that of course have weaknesses to each other, it has different weapon types that also interact differently, different combinations per character, every character is playable, you have spells that match those different elements, creatures with different weaknesses to these elements, and all of that good stuff that you expect to come in an RPG, and it's all wrapped up in a very nice action style combat game. So it wouldn't be a very good impressions video if I didn't tell you guys what I didn't like about this game. And what I don't like seems to be slightly objective. I would say that the voice acting, at least the English voice acting, in a lot of areas just 
wasn't my cup of tea, I didn't think it was very good enough to scratch. I will also say that some of the writing in the game, while charming, simply isn't going to be for everyone. It borders on childish and whimsical, which definitely isn't everyone's cup of tea. But outside of that, I really enjoyed the combat, I really enjoyed the exploring, the levelling experience, the story, all of that stuff, so for me the positives definitely outweighed the negatives for Nino Kuni 2. So guys, that is my first impressions of Nino Kuni 2, of about 10 hours gameplay, being about as concise and spoiler free as possible for you guys. I hope it's opened your eyes to this game, made you have another look at it, or perhaps shown it to you all together, as it's definitely worth looking at for the art style, for the RPG elements, for the smooth combat, and for the lovely, lovely story. I hope you guys will consider picking this up if you are a fan of any of those things. I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay in the background, again as spoiler free as possible, and it will just give you a little insight into the combat of the game, which is of course, if you're like me, going to be one of the key features to if you're going to enjoy an RPG or not. So guys, I'll see you next time. Goes nothing. Make yourselves useful. Here goes nothing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>